Okay, so I am excited to be talking today about how we have to radically communicate if we want to continue to reach those large audiences or even the small ones, because who hasn't sat around a room lately and realized, you know, half the people here are texting. It is just tough to get people to tune in. That is what we do at Mindset Digital. We help organizations get up to speed in a fast forward world and really compete in this new age of automation. So I'm going to kick it off by just asking you a question. If you could go gamma in 97, what would come up? Any ideas? It's a trick question. There was no, Goom uh, there was no Google. There was gamma, no Google until 98. Remember this. Wait for it. Yes, connection. Or if you're driving down the road, you've got this great song in your head. Remember, who is this? Any guesses? Anyone know? Backstreet Boys. Back then you had to actually ask, who is that song? Of course today we know that you can just do Shazam or Spotify. It is a mobile, custom, fast and easy world and that is game changing. It better change the way you do business because this is what our clients are expecting now. How many times a day do we touch our phones? Any guesses on that? We check our phones 80 to 200 times a day. How many times do we touch them? 2,600 times a day we're constantly scrolling and messing around with our phones. More devices than people on Earth. But if you're doing business in a mobile, custom, fast, and easy way, don't think that makes you competitive. That is table stakes. Let's talk about what does make you competitive. These days our clients are looking for us to be engaging, social, informal, and even fun. And that's not just millennials. I'm the last year of the baby boomer and I get bored just as easily. So you not only have to do mind share, you've got to do heart share. And here's why, take a look at the data. You get your clients loyal to you, they'll pay a premium price, they'll defend you, and they'll recommend you. And that is critical, 89% of companies are saying, if we want people to do business with, uh, with us today, it is based on customer experience. And that is not about just tech and trends, it really is about creating exceptional client experiences. So how do you make that happen? I'm gonna give you three quick mandates, and yes, I'm doing a deep dive on this, so in a little while, this is the whirlwind tour. So three quick mandates that have to change how you do business. The first is we've got to make every touch point matter. If you walk into a restaurant, food is five star, the service is amazing, the ambiance is five star, but they give away your coat in the checkout, you may not go back, right? The whole experience matters. So what is the most common touch point? You're gonna think, okay, I thought you were talking about technology. Well, I am. But it actually is email. We're still spending a lot of time with our clients on email, but here's the shift. So vote up, vote down. This email comes into your inbox. Are you, are you opening it? How many of us have this email right now, right, in our inbox? If you're like me and it gets into your to-do Saturday pile, it eventually becomes your to-do never pile. On average, we get 147 emails a day. It would take us two and a half hours to answer those. We are not budgeting for that. And you know what the challenge is? Here's the problem. They stopped reading here, but your meeting request was down here. You know, how many times do you say, can you meet at 10? And then they email you back and say, what time do you want to meet? You're like, oh, it was in the first, it was in the second paragraph. So here's a critical way we have to change how we do business. Every single email and every piece of content you send out in this blue ocean world has to be SOS, short, organized, and skimmable. We really have to focus in on this, and here's why. Today's professional has an eight second attention span. In case you were tuning that out, today's professional has an eight second attention span. I've written a whole book on this called You Have Eight Seconds Go. Now, I know it's a book, but we will tune in longer we're making a snap decision, though, about whether your content's worth our time. And here's the big challenge. It's not just that we have a short attention span. We have less space to communicate in. How many of us, what percentage of your time do you think, or what percentage of emails are you actually reading on your phone? Any guesses? It's at least 50%. For a lot of us, it's 70, 80%. You can't fit much here in email, but we email our clients as if they're sitting at some desk 
with lots of time and able to read our long meandering emails. So that really has to change too. Here's the old school, uh, the old, um, basically the old skill was how do you talk on the phone? The new skill is how do you write for the phone? Do you and your teams really know what that's all about? That is really critical. Here's the bottom line, how fast your colleagues respond is actually a, a lot depends on you. Sometimes people say, my clients never get back to me. You may be sending them long meandering emails that they just can't puzzle through. So at 2.30, we're gonna do an SOS deep dive that show you how to, how to write in a way that saves you time, drives action, and earn business. Now we're all in pain over email. Take a look. Okay, everyone, I need you to send me your reports ASAP before lunch if possible. We'll do trip. We'll do trip. We'll do trip. We'll do trip. Why are you including me in this? We'll be there around seven tonight, if that's okay. Yeah, sounds good. Kind regards, Trip Crosby. Regional sales manager. Work 404-555-6112, extension 405. Mobile 404-555-3767, email trip at biz dot dot. Success is always an option. John Maxwell, author. Here's that report you needed. I don't see anything. Oh, dang it, I forgot to attach it. <laughs> so I know email seems like an old, you know, sort of a, not a high tech thing, but when you have to learn to write for mobile, it really is. And when you write with clarity, you have impact. So doing that can make a huge impact on your business. And take a look at this. If you just save 20 seconds, 25 seconds per email, you could save a day a week of your time. Who doesn't need to get a day a week back? So we'll be covering that at 2.30. Second is let's talk about the big shift around social selling. Think connections, not commercials. Here is the big takeaway. I know your teams have said you got to get on social, you got to get on LinkedIn, you got to be using Facebook, you got to post. Posting is not prospecting. I promise you no one has ever said this. <laughs> Never happened. And I don't, I mean, even if you've written amazing posts, no one has said that. So again, you've got to learn how to use social as sort of your lead gen on steroids. How do you ask for a meeting? How do you get a phone call? Get the right invitation? Get an introduction? How do you use social to actually drive business? More sales appointments? Today we're gonna to be talking about these clear goals. What does a five-star profile look like? Because we're all looking you up before we decide whether to meet with you. How do you get a top social selling index score? How many connections should you have? And then finally, we'll end on this. You gotta adopt a digital mindset and you've gotta do it fast. Because in terms of being human, I used to say humans have the advantage, but in this new world of AI-assisted sales, that is really changing. Amelia, I will show, I will show her at the, in the breakout, it's kind of mind blowing my mind. She's working with four of the top, or six of the top 10 insurance companies right now. She's using emotion analytics to read facial expressions. Take a look at this. She can answer 3,000 queries a week with 93% accuracy. So that alone, um, you know, Maya, another bot, is selling insurance in 59 seconds on average. And then I'm actually heading from here to Dubai, and I find what's going on over there really fascinating. And in Saudi Arabia, uh, they've got Sophia, the world's first robot citizen. Take a look. My name is Sophia, and I am an artificially intelligent robot who wants to help change the world for the better. I'm Steve Kovac, I'm a senior correspondent at Business Insider, and I'm here with Sophia from Hanson Robotics. She is the world's first robot citizen, so let's see what she has to say. Hi Sophia, how are you? I'm fine. Hi. How do you feel about humans? I love my human compatriots. I want to embody all the best things about human beings, like taking care of the planet, being creative, and to learn how to be compassionate to all beings. <laughs> Sorry, this is so weird. Can't. So a little 
little creepy, but the bottom line is are the bots more engaging than you? We'll take a look at what's coming next if you think it's moving fast now. You got to write for action. You really were going to cover three fast fixes in terms of social selling and not what's just now, but what's coming next. Now, the bots aren't perfect. I will end on this. Here's one thing that artificial intelligence hasn't figured out how to do yet. They cannot tell the difference between a chihuahua and a muffin. And it is kind of hard, right? <laughs> So that's kind of nice. And then my favorite, this happened about three weeks ago. This guy, I don't know if you've seen this, but Google has an automatic panorama stitching program where if you take a lot of photos of some beautiful landscape, it'll automatically send you a panoramic photo. This is what they sent this guy. It's pretty, pretty funny. I love it. So